There's a there's a beautiful line that you have in there, and, and actually, I think I may have glued two of your lines here together, but it still <laughs> works. Forgive me. Pain is not optional, but suffering is. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and you did not glue those together. They are perfectly put together. Nice job. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. yeah you know, pain, pain is a part of life. Mm -hmm. uh, life happens, and a lot of people are in resistance to life happening. Um, life isn't just about the good, 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 the you know, babies being born, the new loves, the, all that stuff. It's about the breakups. It's about the deaths. It's about everything. It's all of it, right? And and some of it is painful. Some of it really hurts. But suffering is the choice. Do I choose to suffer because of what is? Or do I choose to feel the pain and process it, allow it in, and then see the gift in it? And it really is a choice. It brings up, it, you mentioned it, but it is such a powerful world to bring it back up and see what you want to share on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forgiveness... Man, I think if everyone took a dose of forgiveness in their life, the world would be a lot lighter and a lot happier. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people are walking around, and this was me for a very long time, with these old wounds, and, and we're looking at the person that we're saying did it to us, mm -hmm. and we're waiting for justification. We're waiting for, um, you know, to, to feel some sort of justice or to feel like, they got theirs because I got mine, right? And that resentment is really a poison that sits and seeps through all of us and just robs us of our joy. And forgiveness is such a huge part in really, one, seeing how this act, this thing that happened, this thing that occurred, how it triggered something within us. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a whole forgiveness process in the book, but I'll kind of touch on a few pieces. When something occurs, it triggers an old wound in us. It triggers something within us that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough, um, they don't respect me, whatever our story is. And we can see that act as an act, as a gift that has occurred so that we're able to be with that thing mm -hmm. that we have yet to really face off with. And when we face off with that within ourselves, again, being radically responsible for it, we can then offer compassion and gratitude for the person that did the thing to us, quote unquote. And then we can really start to see that person as a person who's being with their own stuff. You know, they're going through their own human life. They may have their own past that has brought them to this point that has um, allowed them to do the type of thing that they've done because we know that hurt people hurt people. So if we can see somebody with a level of mm -hmm. compassion, it really kind of takes the whole forgiveness process and goes, oh, I get it. Yeah. Thank you for that. In A Course in Miracles, um, they say that all attack is a cry for help. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we constantly are reminding ourselves is that we don't forgive because we're weak. We forgive because we don't want to carry around that emotional poison for too long. Because poison, as we know, kills us. It kills us. And the body is a living library. It stores every trauma, everything we've ever experienced in there. And so the forgiveness is a part of the release. The forgiveness is, is a letting go and a understanding that everybody is doing the best they can from where they can mm -hmm. with the tools they have available in any given moment. And that every single one of us makes mistakes. Every single one of us does really dumb stuff sometimes. And that dumb stuff results in other people having experiences called hurt or pain. And so for us to sit on, and this is, and I speak for myself, there are so many things that quote unquote went wrong that I am absolutely grateful that they did. Oh, yeah. And so when we can really take a look at forgiveness is about clearing and cleaning the plate off so we can be a vessel for that which is calling us forward. So we can be the space. You know, we say all the time, and it's not your job to make it happen. It's your job to welcome it. It's, it, it's a conversation of receptivity. Mm -hmm. And we clean and clear our, our, our signal for that which is greater than, you know, is that which is bigger than, you know, all of us by, by stepping into the conversation of, you know, who do I need to forgive? 
Yeah. What do I need to let go? Who? Do, where do I need to release this 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 anger and this pain and this suffering and this anxiety around what my grandfather did when I was seven, around my mom leaving when I was nine? Mm. And and here's the thing too. A lot of people think that they've forgiven. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I'm past that. I've forgiven him. Yeah. I've forgiven. Danger. Him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then you you can feel it, right? You can feel their anger. You can feel their hatred. It's like bubbling right under the surface. And we get a lot of clients that say, "Well, I'm ready to forgive, but he won't talk to me, or she won't talk to me." Mm. It, you don't need two people. It takes only you to forgive. Period. And. That is the work of being radically responsible, is being 100% responsible for your version of what happened. And and truly, like Preston said, letting it go, letting it go and seeing that it's here because it had to be here for you. Mm -hmm. Everything is intended. Everything is intended. And it is your teacher if you allow it to be. If you stop resisting it, it is your teacher, period. Another part of this conversation then has to be the conversation you have with yourself when you put that mirror in front of yourself and go, I forgive me. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, people, people are looking for the other person to say something, Mm -hmm. you know, for it to be done. They want to hear, I'm sorry. They want to hear, I love you. They want to hear, I didn't mean that. And really, that's your inner voice, your inner child wanting to hear it from yourself. So if you can look in the mirror and stare at yourself and give yourself the words that you've been waiting to hear, that's a gift. That's such a gift. And and I got to say this because I know there's somebody listening to this going, yeah, but there has to be justice. Right. If somebody did me wrong, they have to face off with that thing. Right. Because I know that I've been in that conversation many times. And um, I want to remind anybody who's in that conversation that justice and. um, First of all, life isn't fair in that way, not on this plane. Right. But um, I think it was the Buddha that said you will not be punished um, for your anger, but by it. Bingo. The poison. The poison you're talking about. And you have a beautiful story in there about pulling out a couple of knives and hacking on yourself or hacking on someone else. Yes, yes. exactly. So, exactly. so, so the, the, the person who, you know, anybody who does something that, you know, we call heinous, you know, like, are, you know, hurting little children and things of this nature. Um, and we, we do bring up the story of uh, the woman whose daughter was... Uh, hit by a drunk driver and then she created mad Mm -hmm. mothers against drunk driving and that, you know, 13, 23 million members later and all the lives and laws that they've passed, I'm sure in essence, she would want her daughter back for sure. But, um, life isn't fair in that way. And so, you know, when we surrender to the process and get that everything that is here is supposed to be here Mm -hmm. and everything that isn't is, you know, on another journey in another plane, then we can let go and, and begin the healing process. I can hear. Thank you so much on that. I'm really, I hadn't planned on spending so much time on forgiveness, but it's so important. I'm also hearing the people behind me who are listening who aren't willing to forgive themselves. I, I cheated. I did something terrible. Right. I didn't please this person, something in their lives for which they go, I can forgive anybody else, but how can I live with myself for X, Y, or Z? Yeah. 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 And, and to that, we would say one, get under it, get under it. You, you didn't just do that out of nowhere. Nothing comes from, you know, no thing. It comes from something. So what was the impetus? What was the thing that really, um, catalyze that. And when you can get under the thing that catalyzed that, then you get under a root problem that's probably been around for a lot longer than before you did the thing. Yeah. So we we talk about in the book that how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. And that nine out of 10, you know, the same way that you wash the dishes is the same way that you deal with, you know, uh, traffic or, you know, folding clothes or whatever the case may be, or what happens when you are put under pressure is the same thing that happens when you're put under pressure uh, at home or whatever the case may be. And so, uh, I would remind anybody who's having a hard time forgiving themselves that it, you're a decision away, mm-hmm. that, it, that it's a process that we're forever unfolding and we're all on a journey home to the self. And in that process, in that journey, A, and this is 
me speaking about me right now. Mm -hmm. I know it's a crime against humanity every single day that I hold myself in that victim consciousness. I know it's a crime against humanity. Any, any moment that I'm sitting in this woe is me conversation as I – you know, play with my, you know, $700 phone and, you know, food in my refrigerator and all of the other stuff that, that I have now, you know, we, it's so easy. And that's why we put this very early in the book to operate from this victim consciousness. I would ask that person and myself, what's the payoff? Yeah. What do you get from being a victim? What do you get from being, Oh, I messed up 30 years ago. And therefore, what do you get from that? Yeah. Because there's usually a payoff connected to it. If you can catch the payoff and choose something else to check those boxes off, then life may be a lot different. Yeah. And, and we are really one decision away from rectifying anything. It's just a matter of owning what you've done and, and being radically responsible and choosing to act out of integrity after that. So you, you bring up some important words here. First off, the word word and choosing our words seems to be coming up. And, and the choices of the language even when we're using to ourselves seems to be very important. And now you just mentioned integrity. And it brings up the question of what's the importance of keeping our word with ourselves? Mm, oh, gosh, that's everything. Because so many people are um, people of integrity with others. And they truly like, you, you know, they love it. They're like, Oh, yeah, I always keep my word. I always keep my promises. My word is my bond. But yet they say, Oh, I'm going to go to the gym and they stay at home and watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. Or they say this is a year where I'm going to cut out caffeine and sugar and they have a cup of coffee and a donut. And it's literally those little insidious promises that we make to ourselves and break on a consistent basis. It's exactly tied to our confidence. It's exactly tied to self-trust. And a lot of people walk around going, I don't know why I, I have all these insecurities. I don't know why I'm, you know, uh, feeling less than around others. It's because you have zero self-trust because you know you are not a person of your word to yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot trust yourself, how could you ever think that anybody could see you as a person of integrity? And that's where that insecurity comes from. So self-trust is really everything. Yeah. Well, would you suggest how, Oh, go for it. Yes. So the how to um, change that relationship would start with looking at all the places where you are your word. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I get it. You know, there's a lot of people who've done a lot of dumb things, P period. And, and, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, Raising my hand here. Us, exactly. I, us too. <laughs> but, you know, what you focus on expands. What you appreciate, appreciates. Mm -hmm. What you celebrate in others gets repeated. And, you know, we see it with children all the time. They go to open the door. And you go, yay, you open the door. And then they want to open every door, right? <laughs> and so, you know, we're no different. If you start focusing on back to that conversation, we did we have that in this? No, maybe <laughs> uh, it was another conversation. But the the point is, is like. But isn't know, it cool? Isn't it, I don't want to distract der derail you too much. But isn't it cool how you start a conversation one place, and 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 I consider it divine guidance from the universe. The thread carries forward someplace yeah. else, and there's this continuity. Yeah, yes. For so sure. I'm, I'm gonna I bookmark that. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. So sorry, go, going back to you, you, you were saying it was, it was taking place in a previous conversation now that I've completely derailed you. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I think what I was saying, I don't remember what I was saying. It was oh, perfect. Oh no, and people it's are listening perfect. to this. They're going, what was he going to say, Michael? Why did you jump thing, in? Magic thing. Yeah, the point is, is that what you, what you appreciate, appreciates. And, Thank you. And when we focus on well, whatever we focus on, we give life to. And so yeah. you, could, you could have screwed up a hundred times, but the hundred and one time, if you kept your word, you look at that 101 and you go, hell yeah. I'm on to it. I'm on to yes. it. I'm on and, to and it. And you celebrate it. That's why step number five in our book is have a blast because we're reminding people that if you're not having fun, if you're not celebrating, if you're not choosing play and joy mm -hmm. consistently, if it's not scheduled into your life, you are missing a huge chunk of what it means to be human. You're missing the point. You know, the point of life is to live, to be alive. And how many of us are just like drones on our computers all day or on our machines and we come home and we're not even present with those we love. You know, the point of life is to be alive. So don't miss the point while you're doing the things that you do. Don't miss it. Amen and a woohoo. Yeah. So <laughs> let's let's jump briefly into step number three, act now. And maybe you can tell us about Scott Cody and uh, setting alarms to center. 
Ooh, yes. Yeah, for us, uh, so was it last year? Two years ago. Two years ago. No, a year and a half ago, maybe. Yeah, two years know. ago. Our two concept of time is like, <laughs> yeah, we doesn't work. Barely know <laughs> we don't live in time ever. space reality. Um, so two well, years ago. Dr. Joe Dispenza, I, says, I think he says, uh, and, and I'm paraphrasing because my wife attended his, his conference recently, lives in a place of no time. Exactly. Yes. 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 Or Einstein time. I'm or, reading his or, book right now. Where we created. So um, so yeah, a couple years ago, we did a program called the art of leadership mastery with mm -hmm. Scott Cody. It was a, uh, six month, six month, program. six month program. Um, and, uh, a couple months in, he introduced centering, which is something we were already doing, but not consciously. Mm -hmm. Um, it came from Aikido. Um, and it's about bringing and marrying the breath, of the body and bringing an awareness to the center of our bodies and breathing all the way into it. Because most people don't actually breathe properly as simple and easy as that sounds most of us are chest and neck breathers we we don't really go past that <sighs> and yeah, breathing and through them awesome. through the mouth open there uh -huh. yes exactly so uh in that program he uh asked us to set alarms and alexi and i being the overachievers that we are set more than we were quote unquote supposed to mm -hmm. and so you know about every half hour you know in not while we were asleep, obviously, but throughout our day, the alarm would go off and it would just remind us to breathe all the way into our belly mm -hmm. and to become centered. And to essentially, the, the point of centering is choice. Yeah. Options, awareness. Because a lot of us are running around like a chicken with its head cut off and going from one thing to the next, being busy, being busy, being busy, being busy. And we feel overwhelmed and stressed out because we're not actually pausing in the present moment. You know, the busyness is this scarcity mentality of the future. If I don't do enough now, then I won't get to fill in the blank. Or we're worried and frustrated with our past. But centering brings us right into the present moment, drops us in, mm -hmm. and gives us a little bit of space to just see where am I? What do I choose now? Mm -hmm. Where do I want to be? Yeah. I like More it. More oxygen in the brain. I love it. Maybe we should all take a breath here. Let's do it. So it's kind of ironic. Let's go from being centered and then let's talk about obliterating our comfort zone and mutant wolves, zombies, and fire breathing dragons. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have an awesome metaphor in the book uh, and a nice little picture in there, too, for any of you who like visuals, uh, where we talk about the comfort zone being like your couch. It's like the cozy couch. Netflix is on. Wi-Fi is working well. Mm -hmm. You've got popcorn. you got all the good stuff. You are set up and ready to go. Now, it's really hard to leave that space, right? Most of us know if you've put on a series on Netflix, it's really hard to not press next and go to the next one and the next one and the next one. But that's where the magic happens. When we stop hitting next, when we stop saying, okay, I'm going to stay here, and we step out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. into the forest of the unknown. And the forest of the unknown has the mutant wolves. It's got all these crazy, crazy obstacles that we have to face that are scary. They are super scary, which is why most people stay in their comfort zone. But in order to get to the castle, the castle's that big dream, the castle's that big vision, you've got to go and pass through the forest. And what happens usually is people, they'll be sitting in their comfort zone, they'll be sitting there and then one day they go, you know what, enough's enough. I'm sick of being overweight. I'm sick of this dead end job. I'm sick of this dead end relationship. Enough's enough. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to do something different. <laughs> this time of year, most people are doing that, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? They step into the forest of the unknown and they start to get real about what's happening. Like, oh my gosh, this is actually going to take some work. This is actually going to take me getting over my fears and stepping through it and facing off with those dark, dark mutant wolves and fire breathing dragons. It's going to take me getting completely unreasonable and uncomfortable to make it through. And what happens is most people never even face off with one wolf because the forest is dark and scary and they go right back to their comfort zone. Some people face off with one wolf or one dragon, slay it, and then go, oh my gosh, that was really hard. Okay, I'm done. Because that forest looks like it goes on forever and I don't have the stamina for it. And then they go right back. For the people that make it all the way through the forest, what happens is 
and they see the castle. The castle's there off in the distance, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so close. I'm so close. It's right there. And then they get there, and there's a moat, and there's no bridge. They're like, are you kidding me? They're like, no way. And no steroid-induced <laughs> crocodiles. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That are jumping out of the moat, and they're like, come and get me, come and get me. And the reason we put that moat there is because – there's often a big challenge right before you hit gold. There's often that that one thing that's going to test you to see if you're truly committed to getting into that castle or not. And what happens is the people who get that far, a lot of them turn away when they see the moat. A lot of them say, you know what? I knew this wasn't for me. I knew it wasn't meant to be. I'm going to go right back to what I know, even though I hate what I know. At least I know it. This, I'm not willing to do this. But the people willing to face off with the, the crocs and to get to the castle, those are the ones that get to the castle, get all the way to the top, and now they see the view. They see a new perspective, a new normal, and they see new castles that they can go to. Mm -hmm. And their entire perspective changes. But for those who stay in the comfort zone, they only have the perspective of the fear. They only mm -hmm. have the perspective of what they have to face off with because they haven't gotten the win yet. But in order to get the win, you have to be committed. So, Woo <laughs> yeah. So let's let's go from there. Let's talk briefly. Step number four: own who you are. And I've been calling 2017 for Jessica and myself. Now she has her own term for it, but I've been calling it the year of getting into alignment. What yes. does it mean to be in alignment with your truth? I love that. Yeah. So for us, this is you know, let's just say you do steps one through three, yep. right? So you're, you're, you, you're stepping into knowing that you have a choice, you've moved into radical responsibility, you've, you know, begun to act, but you're doing it with your ladder up against the wrong wall. Then none of it means anything. You're doing it still based on the conversation of, I need to prove that I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. So my dad will finally love me the way that he loved my brother then it doesn't even matter. Yeah. And so for us, um, this step, owning who you are, is about embracing, aligning with the truth of your being, dancing in the bliss and the beauty of what it means to be you, honoring the humanness, and, 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 and really stepping into, into that and, and, and giving that gift like your life depended on it. So for us, this, this step is, is really important, and this is the one that... It, and, and I say this and I've said this many times, when you really step in and like own it, you, your gift will make room for you. One of the reasons why we are, even have a book, one of the reasons why we're even you know, in the quote unquote the public eye is because we're willing to be us mm. unapologetically. You know, to be authentic means to author, to author, to be the, the Picasso, to be the Michelangelo of your own life. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, it's self-explanatory. Like, you get to own what it means to be you. Preston, Alexi, you guys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> we think you're pretty cool, too. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I'm sitting here, and I'm having one of those moments of sitting back from the conversation and listening to what you're saying, and it's, 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 it's so important, so incredibly important. And, and I'm also saying, wow, this is really special, and, and I'm so enjoying this time with you and, and I don't usually break out of interview <laughs> and we'll, we'll keep that in we'll keep the kudos in there yeah, so yeah, so oh, okay this is a dangerous question to go with off of that last one it really segues badly um, why are goals BS <laughs> Ooh. well goals are BS because most people a are creating from a paradigm that they're currently in mm -hmm. and their current reality paradigm is limited it's limited and we are limitless beings. So goals are BS because a lot of times we're saying, ooh, I want the house that looks like this. I wanna make X amount of dollars per year based on where I'm currently at. But if we play in this limitless perspective, we get that we can really create anything and everything can change with one decision. That's what a lot of people miss. They say, well, I don't see how I can practically get from here to there you know, if I want, if I'm making $30,000 a year, I don't know how to get to a million dollars in a year. That just doesn't make sense to me logically. And because we think in such a linear way, we miss the, the nonlinear universe and how it works where you can meet one person at one conference Changes who invests, everything. yeah, who invests in your company $5 million and boom, overnight. 
new reality. So that's number one. Number two, goals are BS because people, they, they expect the goal to be the answer. Mm -hmm. They expect the goal, the outcome to be the answer. Once I get the house, then I'll feel this. Once I get the car, then I'll feel this. Once I get the job, then I'll feel this. But really, we are, we're after the feeling. We're not after the outcome. We're after the feeling that we think that outcome is going to bring us. So if we're looking for our one, we're like, oh, I just really want to meet my one. I want to get married. I want to have a family. We're looking for a sense of belonging. We, we're looking to feel acknowledged and appreciated and loved. And Preston and I, what we do in our work is we challenge people to self-generate those feelings. We say, hey, there's a million other ways that you can actually experience love and appreciation. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try another way first, start living in the vibration of love and appreciation, and you'll see that the person's going to show up because you're, you're already being the space of a love and appreciation. Mm -hmm. But the problem is most people, exactly, <laughs> woohoo, big woohoo to that, because most people are waiting for the world to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. And the people who are creating and living extraordinary and epic lives are out there self-generating the world that they want. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So what, what do you both mean? And I, I can already hear Preston's words on this one because you've kind of alluded to this several times over. What do you mean you cannot fail? Yeah, so <laughs> I, yeah, you're right. I have alluded to this many times. We are forever on a journey unfolding like a lotus flower. And as long as there's breath in the body and we're in this dimension, it's impossible to fail because everything leads to everything. And everything can be our teacher if we truly choose to see it in that way. You know, I said in a video recently, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear and everything and everyone is your teacher. And so being in the dance, really taking in the magic of this planet and who you become in the process is really the juice. Like, I love hitting these certain, you know, things and like, you know, for instance, one of the uh, wounds, the core wounds that I have been operating from um, mm -hmm. for a lot of my life is, is not being as smart as everyone else. Um, and now it's manifesting itself in business in this conversation around business and how I'm just another young black guy and who the hell is going to listen to me. Right. So that's the ego mind having a conversation. But I know it because I have an awareness of it. So I sidestep. I override that conversation and step into committed, aligned action. And in that space, do I do things that don't work? Absolutely. But who I become in that process is where I'm actually excited about. The, the process of systemizing and scaling a business in a way in which I can reach, we can reach millions and millions of people. Who do I have to become to have that happen? And like, that's the part that's exciting. Like, I think I'm pretty freaking awesome right now. But the Preston that I have to, that I'm in process of becoming like that caterpillar headed to that butterfly, that process. Wow. Like if you can embrace that, you have everything. Yeah, and that's why you can't fail because who you become in the process of where you want to go, mm -hmm. that's the gift. I mean, that is the gift is that you get to expand and you get to mm. see what you're made of and you get to see what's possible in this life. And it's all a game and it's just a matter of how you choose to play it. Mm. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so from there, I, I know I want to jump into a brief meditation, so we'll, we'll keep this kind of quick and I have a few quick wrap up questions, but going back to step five, taking it sequentially to have a blast, what's the importance of the F word? Mm. Well, the importance of fun is, again, if you are not living life from a place of joy and a place of uh, love and happiness, then you're missing the whole point. Because again, this whole thing is a game and we can choose to play it miserably and we can choose to be annoyed and frustrated as we move our peace down the road of life, or we can choose to really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And when we enjoy life and we vibrate in the frequency of joy and happiness, mm -hmm. what happens is we become the vibrational space for more of that joy to show up. So mm -hmm. if you want a different reality, you have to start vibrating on a different level. Schedule it in, go. Schedule it in. That's that's one of the things that, that has been the game changer for us. Mm -hmm. Is is making sure that it's literally in our phones, it's in our on our workbooks. Like this is time for play. 
like you, like we talked about and alluded to earlier, we, we, we're all over the world. We're shooting mm-hmm. videos. We're doing all kinds of stuff. But every time we go anywhere, we add an extra 10 to 30 days, if possible, of <laughs> just hanging out and having <laughs> fun. Yeah. Exactly. Why not? And that's what, what I was telling Jessica a couple of days ago. I said, look, we've got a little bit of time before the new year. I don't need to know the exact places that we're going to go, but I want to block off our vacation time now. Yeah. That way it happens no matter what. Yes. yes. And that's it. You got to, you have to schedule it in. And people say, well, I hate schedules. I hate like schedules box me and no schedules give you freedom and schedules. Truly. If you want to level up your life, you, you got to schedule it. Mm-hmm. You really do. Cause if you don't schedule it, life will take your time. Period. Amen. So a few quick wrap up questions, then we'll dive into a meditation. Jessica always likes me to ask and 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 you're young. I don't believe you do have kids yet. But what advice would you give parents anyway to, <laughs> to help their kids along this path? Oh, um, I would say really foster and support their unique expression. Because I think that's something that parents don't realize that they're doing because they're so well-meaning and they want the best for their kids. So they tell them to not do this or to do that or to be careful of that or to watch out for this. And they don't understand that they're actually programming their children to do exactly what they were programmed to do. So I think the biggest thing that we're talking about as we're talking about having kids soon is we really want to foster this. <laughs> yeah. We want to foster this, um, unique individuality and expression and allow them to play with that and to not give them societal boxes to be put in, to actually let them fly and to see where their wings will take them. Yeah. And, and for me, I'll add to that. Um, the best thing a parent can do is fill their cup and give from the overflow to be the be the best version of you because kids are watching all the time and they're soaking it up. And if your way of being is one of love and peace and harmony and joy, your kids will have that same experience. Woohoo! (laughs) So uh, a question we like to ask all our guests just before the end is what personally brings both of you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo factor? (laughs) Yes. Uh, you got yours? No, but I'll go. <laughs> okay. I think, I think for me, it's creation. Mm-hmm. I love creating. I love just having a concept or an idea and then seeing it come to life, whether it's a new program or a, a creative you know, jewelry piece or an art piece that I make. I just love the process of creation. It excites me. It gets me up early. It has me up late. It's everything. I love it. Yeah. Um, con- contribution. When I'm giving, yeah. whether it be through videos, whether it be through you know f- Facebook posts, books, whatever it is, when I'm when I'm truly tapped into that space and getting that there's only one of us here and and like giving my gift at the highest capacity, that just fills me up. I'm like, I'm on some Oprah stuff at that point. And I'm like, I feel super good. Um, so yeah, when I'm, when I'm reaching out to others. And, and, and the theme that I'm hearing of both of them is you are both inspired and in spirit at that time. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. We're out of our own way. Woo-hoo! <laughs> yes. So any last words of wisdom you'd both like to share? I'd love to remind people that, um, you already know, and you always have known. Uh, the wisdom is within, and to develop and do whatever it takes to really develop a relationship with that deep inner self, because that's where the wisdom comes from. Yes, there's a lot of great guides and people out there to support that, but you have it within you, and trust that. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'd say uh, similar. I'm just going to say it different. Um, It's not a matter of becoming. It's a matter of revealing. Revealing what's already here in service to the planet. Where do people go to find your beautiful book and to find out more? Yes, they can go to nowornevertheBook.com and you can find all the information there about the book and also about Preston and myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you didn't catch that, if you're driving down the road, come on over to inspirenationshow.com and we'll get you over to Alexi and Preston as well. So now I'll crank it back up for the finish. (laughs) For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get now or never and make your life epic. 
and shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you so much. Yes, of For course. Sure, Thank you and have a beautiful new year. And and you as well and enjoy the sunshine. Yes, we Absolutely. will. Bye Michael. Bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also leave your comments, have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're gonna get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>